Today is the 17th, March 17th, 2021. Did you read the 17th proverb today? You know there are 31 days in this month. A proverb a day. You ought to read more than that per day. But if that's all that you read, you should read more. You should. Not going to make excuses for you, but if at the least you read a proverb a day, that's better than most, right? But then again, if you read the scriptures as a mechanical thing, that you have to do this, 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 and this, then kind of guilty, I think, of uh, misappropriating the reading of the scriptures. Because, see, the scriptures are alive. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who wrote the scriptures, you know, the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit, will speak to you through the scriptures. And having a system of reading helps but it, within that system of reading the scriptures, if the Lord is not showing you something, anything, there might be something grievously wrong with your reading. Just throwing that out there. But then again, there are those of the Church of the Living God who do not read the scriptures as they should. Because they, number one, are of the Church of the Living God. Number two, they are sealed uh, un unto the day of redemption. You know, and that seal is the Holy Ghost. An unction from the Holy One. And the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is that Spirit. Okay? There are some of you out there who will not read the scriptures of the Church of the Living God as you should. Because you might be afraid what he'll say to you. That's when you really need to have courage. We're going to be looking at five verses within the 17th proverb. Something very fascinating to me. Okay? Proverbs... Chapter 17, and yes, I'm using two scriptures for this. Proverbs chapter 17, we're going to be looking at verses 7 on to verse 11. Proverbs chapter 17, verses 7 on to verse 11. Oh, what, what I, might, I must be lazy? Right? <laughs> uh, you heard what he said. Yes. But do you understand what he said? Uh Proverbs chapter 17, verses 7 on to verse 11. Excellent speech becometh not a fool. What is a fool? The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Excellent speech becometh not a fool. Much less do lying lips a prince. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Come on, fingers. Ephesians chapter 4. Verses 29 unto verse 32. Excellent speech becometh not a fool. 
Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 on to verse 32. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Corrupt, putrid, rank, decaying. Remember where it says, and his body saw not corruption? Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace, may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. And the Lord is that Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Sealed. Unto the day of redemption. What is the day of redemption? The uh, redemption of the purchased possession. The catching away. Falsely referred to as the rapture. Okay? The catching away. This uh, verse 29 on to verse 30. Uh, the verse 30 ties it, you know, ties it in. Um speaking on to those who are saved, okay? Those of the church of the living God, those who are saved, born again, converted, okay? And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. <clears throat> you know, when you let corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, you're grieving the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who dwells within you, You know, when you put wicked things before your eyes and you're of the church of the living God, you're grieving the Lord, the Holy Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ, God, our Father. The Lord is that spirit. You're grieving him who lives within you. Does that bother you? It bothers me. Let all bitterness ooh, and wrath and anger and clamor, clamor, clamorous, like think of pots and pans banging together and evil speaking, evil speaking, lying, cursing, that kind of stuff. Be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. In all your rememberings, Try to remember mercy. Even as, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Now some would like to go to the Sermon on the Mount where it's like if you don't forgive others then God won't forgive your trespasses. That's for a different dispensation. That's for the kingdom of heaven. Uh, during that time it's works because our Lord Jesus Christ is going to be on the throne. And using that means that if you don't forgive someone, you won't for be forgiven. That is not how it is for us today in this dispensation. Okay? Your forgiveness is not predicated on you forgiving someone else. You will, you will reap some pretty corrupt fruit if that is in your heart. But it's not going to affect your salvation, no. Verse 7 in Proverbs 17, excellent speech becometh not a fool. Go to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. 
Colossians chapter 3, verses 9 on 2. I cannot read my own handwriting. 13. Colossians chapter 3, verses 9 on to verse 13. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. The old man. Changed life, who you were before the Lord saved you. <clears throat> and have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Jew, or neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all those of us who are of the church of the living God. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, you are elect whence you are saved. Because the Lord from the beginning elected the way of the cross, which wasn't revealed until many, many thousands of years later. The apostles were not looking forward to the cross. Abraham was not looking forward to the cross. Moses was not looking forward to the cross. Debunked that many times. Okay. Once you are saved, once the Lord saves you, you are of the elect. Okay. Especially in this dispensation. Okay. Because the Gentile is added into the tree of the Jew. Okay. Let's continue. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Let's add verse 14. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Charity is self-sacrifice. I've mentioned this to many of you before. If you're holding on to grudges, even as just as you think you may be, your insides got to be a wreck. Unless you are of, uh, you have made your choice and uh, serve your Lord Satan. What about that, huh? Uh, Proverbs seventeen verse seven. Okay, excellent speech becometh not a fool. A fool has said in his heart, "There is no God." Much less do lying lips a prince. Go to First John. Go to 1 John. 1 John chapter 2. Not 1 Peter, Brad. 1 John chapter 2, verses 21 on to verse 23. 1 John chapter 2, verses 21 on to verse 23. Much less do lying lips a prince. I have not written, uh, 1 John chapter 2, verses 21 on to verse 23. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who knows the truth? Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh unto the Father but by me, the church of the living God, which is the ground and pillar of the truth. Who knows the truth? Those who are saved, born again of the church of the living God. You might know truth, but do you know who the truth is? Do you know him up here? Right? Or here, through a personal relationship with the Lord. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? 
He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Why is that? Because they are one and the same, one God, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God our Father. You know the Godhead, Spirit, Soul, and Body? If you're a Trinitarian, <clears throat> you're denying the Son. Oh, yeah, he's the third person in the Trinity, right? What is a person? Spirit, soul, and body. I, you know, brethren, brethren, you can't, you can't say enough against the Trinity. You can't. You have to be graceful. But you can't say enough against it. Look at what the Jesuits have done. I rest my case. Proverbs 17, verse 7. Much less do lying lips a prince. John chapter 8. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. John chapter 8. John chapter 8, just two verses. Just two verses. John chapter 8, verse 48. Oh, excuse me. Verse 43 on to verse 47. I can't read my own handwriting sometimes. <laughs> John chapter 8, verses 43 on to verse 47. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, speaking. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Much less lying lips of prince. And very quickly on that, Ephesians chapter 2. One verse, verse 2. When in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, the prince of the power of the air, and we already read in John, who's that referring to? Hmm. It's an interesting contrast in just one verse, isn't it? Now, excellent speech becoming not a fool. For our instruction in righteousness, obviously. For unto to those who are of the church of the living God, much less do lying lips, lying lips a prince, making a reference unto those who are of their father, the devil. But, uh, but look at verse 8. A gift is as a precious stone in the eyes of him that hath it, whithersoever it turneth, it prospereth. While we're here in Ephesians chapter 2, Verses 8 on to verse 10. 
For by grace are ye saved through faith. Faith has a very big part to do with your salvation, yes. But it's by God's grace you are saved through faith. Um, no matter what these bizarre people like to say, I've never once preached against faith. What I do speak against is having faith in your faith that having faith in your faith that saves you. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works making reference that once you are born again, change life, putting on the new man. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Once you're saved, what, what do you do now? You adhere your life to the scriptures. And keep going. It doesn't come just like that. It takes time. It takes many errors. It takes many stumblings. It takes many rebukes. Hi. But keep going. Don't quit. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15. Go now to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in present am base among you, but being absent and bold, toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherein I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, Carnal, carne, flesh, carnival, a fleshly display. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, imaginations, strongholds. People in their imaginations can create a stronghold of what they want to believe is truth. And how, how, <laughs> those of you who are saved will get this. How are we going to bring those down? Like I said, those of you of the Church of the Living God will understand that sarcasm. Those of you who are devils, Go do what you do. This is your hour in the power of darkness. Go ahead. Uh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, fleshly, depending on us. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Who pulls down the strongholds? Yeah, God. Who is God? Our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. who are saved, we have the Holy Ghost within us, you know. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. Oh, maybe that you think you are your own God? Like so many of you people do? And bring into captivity 
every thought to the obedience of Christ. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. What does it say there? To the obedience of Christ. You know, the, some of the thoughts you can have are sin. Yeah. Ooh, big part. And that's a difficult one. Bringing your thoughts into captivity to Christ. Because guess what, dear friend? God knows your thoughts. As a saved man, if my salvation were dependent on how I thought, I would have gone to hell quicker than lightning strikes as a saved man. And be honest with yourself, brother, sister. You know you have to. Oh, quit lying to yourself. Who do you think you're fooling? You want to fool yourself? Go ahead. Who do you think isn't going to be fooled? And having in a readiness to avenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Get a load of that verse, huh? Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? What did he say to Samuel? For man looketh on the countenance, but the Lord looketh upon the heart. If any man trust to himself that he is Christ's, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ's, even so are we Christ's. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord hath given us for edification and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed. If someone calls themselves a Christian and all they do is attack and look for every single chink and nick in armor, if that is all they are about. Oh, sure, they're a Christian. But you got to wonder if they're of the church of the living God, which is the ground and pillar of truth. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord hath given us for edification, and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed. That I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters. For his letters, say they, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak, and his speech contemptible. Let such an one think this, that, such as, as we are in word, by letters when we are absent, such will we be also indeed when we are present. Does the way you walk and talk match who you are in person? You know, spirit, soul, and body. Why don't you ask the Lord what he thinks about that? I, I dare you to. Yeah. Of course I have. I do every day. Praise the Lord, he doesn't use an actual physical whip. <clears throat> Let such an one think this, that such as we are in word by letters when we are absent, such will we be also indeed when we are present. For we dare not make ourselves of the number, 
separation and distinction. Or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they, measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. See, in examining yourself, you measure yourself according to the scripture. And as soon as you do that, you realize that you can't measure up. Some of you then will look onto flesh. And what happens? Well, oh, I'm a sinner, but I'm not as bad as this guy is. Well, you make a preacher. You set him as the example and then try to emulate that preacher. And make what that preacher says the sole rule. When that very preacher tells you, don't you dare do that, it's right here in the scriptures. I don't compare myself to any man except one, the man. And guess what? I can't live up to that. And to Paul, try to compare yourself to Paul. Guess what? I'm a sinner who is chief, just like he is. And I am the least of all men. What about you? See, Paul's biggest sin, I truly believe, was pride. And guess what? Yeah, that is my biggest sin. I struggle with pride. And on to the brethren who I have asked this personally. Thank you for the prayers for humility. <laughs> he's, he's answering them. Verse 13. But we will not boast of things without our measure. But according to the measure of the rule which God hath distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reach not unto you. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labors, but having hope, when your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you according to your rule abundantly. To preach the gospel in the regions beyond you, and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. For not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. How can ye believe those who receive honor one of another, and not seeketh the honor that cometh from God only? For the things which are highly esteemed among men are an abomination in the sight of God. <laughs> Who are you seeking to please? Who have I been seeking? Yeah. So, and looking at verse 8 in Proverbs chapter 7, a gift is as a precious stone in the eyes of him that hath it. Whithersoever it turneth, it prospereth. You could say that verse 8 there is specifically for our instruction in righteousness for those of the church of the living God, for our edification. And whithersoever it turneth, it prospereth. Wherever the Lord will have you to go, it is for your good. To repent of sins, to get things out of your life, to get your walk and your life right in the sight of the Lord before it's too late for you. Anything that he's going to put you through is for your good. In the end thereof, that you would consider your latter end. Hence, therefore, it is precious. Hence, reproofs, rebukes, 
are precious. And you know what? I, I love getting rebuked by a brother, even a sister. But ultimately, see, when you spend enough time in the scriptures, the Lord will rebuke you through the scriptures. And if you examine yourself in the light of the scriptures, if you judge yourself, you will not be judged. Isn't that precious? See, we need a lot of instruction in righteousness right now, brethren. Because it's going to be so, it's so easy for people to fall in line, right? Try me. Verse 9. He that covereth a transgression seeketh love. But he that repeateth the matter separateth very friends. He that covereth a transgression seeketh love. Psalm 32. Psalm 32. Yeah, I'm lazy, right? <laughs> you heard what he said, but do you understand what he said? That's the difference. I'm not kicking my brother at all. Okay? Psalm 32, verses 1 on verse 7. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence... My bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. Have you ever been in a situation where you know you should have spoke up and you didn't? And then leaving that situation, the Lord, I gave you a chance and you blew it. And you got to remember, the Lord can provide other opportunities for ones we mess up. But you also have to remember too, brethren, we don't know what the Lord is going to do with that kind of thing. Well, he does. And some of these moments are once in a lifetime. How many once in a lifetime moments have you passed up because you were too afraid Fear man bringeth a snare, and whosoever putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer, Shelah. I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin, Shelah. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. Thou art my resting place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Shilah. Go to Micah now. Chapter 7. Micah chapter 7. Oops, 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 oops. Come on, fingers. Work with me. Micah. Right? Micah chapter 7. Micah. 
Yes, I'm sorry. My Some of my handwriting, uh, that's why I don't write letters to people. <laughs> Micah chapter 7, one verse, verse 18. Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy. The Lord would rather be merciful than angry. Then why do some of us, why do some of you do that which you know makes him angry? If you're ignorant, search the scriptures, I dare you. But if you're not ignorant, I'm speaking onto myself as well, just so you know, okay? <clears throat> he that covereth a transgression seeketh love. Romans chapter five, Romans chapter five. Romans chapter 5, verses 6, on to verse 11. For when, we, for, when, for when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, those who are saved, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Okay? Christ died for us. Christ died for you. But see, you have to come to him on your, on, excuse me, excuse me, on his terms, not your own. Okay? It's not Calvinism, where he died for only the elect. Anyone could be the elect. Just come to the Lord on his terms, broken and contrite. Trust him. And he'll do the rest. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. We're not appointed unto God's wrath. God's wrath is the time of Jacob's trouble. And the redemption of the purchased possession, see, when you are saved, born again, converted, sealed unto the day of redemption, see, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Um, we were purchased by his blood and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sins. Okay? We we have the church of the living God. Know that. Okay? But see, you're purchased. Okay? Hence, you are saved from wrath through him. God's wrath is the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. This is clearly speaking on to those who are saved, newly saved. Just saved. Okay? And then it goes into Romans chapter 6, talking about, you know, sin and whatnot. Then Romans chapter 7, about how the greatest of the church of the living God struggled with sin daily. And also, for that, go to Mark chapter 2 very quickly. Mark chapter 2, 
Mark chapter 2. One verse, verse 17. When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, they that are whole have no need of the physician. Those who are self-righteous, those who think, I'm not that bad of a person. I ain't sick. I don't need a doctor. They that are whole have no need of the physician. But they that are sick, are you sick? I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. He that covereth a transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth a matter separateth. Very friends. Romans chapter 1. But he that repeateth a matter separateth. Very friends. You know, staying back here, trying to dredge up things of the past. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Satan does he did this he did this he did this he's this he's this <laughs> Romans chapter 1 verses 28 on to verse 32 and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Reprobate mind. When someone has made their choice and given themselves over to Satan and says, I don't want anything to do with God. I'll walk my own way. God knows my heart. Ah. Being filled with all unrighteousness. First thing mentioned. <laughs> Fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers. Hey, did you hear about this? Hey, he did this. Hey, he did that. Backbiters. Haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. Just come up with evil things about so-and-so. Disobedient parents, without understanding. And to depart from evil is understanding. And you depart from evil because you have the fear of the Lord, which is wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. Covenant breakers can't keep their word even if they were held at gunpoint. <laughs> Without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Misery loves company, who knowing the judgment of God, they that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. But he that repeateth a matter separateth very friends. Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 16. Verses 27 on verse 30. <laughs> An ungodly man diggeth up evil, whether they create it, or they look to when they were lost, or, 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 or even like a babe or something. Yeah, yeah. An ungodly man diggeth up evil, and in his lips there is as a burning fire. A froward man soweth strife, and a whisperer. 
separateth chief friends. A violent man enticeth his neighbor and leadeth him into the way that is not good. He shutteth his eyes to devise to devise froward things. Moving his lips, he bringeth evil to pass, causing their lips, making their lips to cause their flesh to sin. He that covereth a transgression seeketh love unto the church of the living God for our instruction in righteousness. But he that repeateth a matter separateth very friends. I think you know who unto whom that could be for our instruction in righteousness be referencing unto. A reproof entereth more into a wise man who is wise, someone who has wisdom. What is wisdom? The fear of the Lord. Then an hundred stripes into a fool. Now that's one verse. That's one sentence. A reproof entereth in more into a wise man than a hundred stripes into a fool. Second Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. A reproof entereth more into a wise man than a hundred stripes into a fool. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. Reproof is for correction. For instruction in righteousness. And we have to read 17. That the man of God may be perfect here thoroughly furnished, thank you, brother, unto all good works where we have been created unto the new man, as it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. See? You get that? Go to Proverbs chapter 6. We're going to be looking at a few Proverbs here. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 6, verses 23 under verse 26. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Mystery Babylon. the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. A woman rides a beast. Mother Church, the Roman Catholic Mary, Mother Church, um, to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Mm. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, decked in pearls and purple and scarlet and gold and precious jewels and odors of cinnamon and ivory thrones in that bizarre throne room thingy that Francis... <clears throat> Beg your pardon. Uh, some of you know what I'm talking about. Hmm. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart. You know, some of their architecture and their church buildings, pretty impressive. Pretty beautiful. They look so good on the outside, don't they? <laughs> the 
neither let her take thee with her eyelids. You know, twinkling of the eyes, that kind of stuff. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. I've, now, I've expounded, expounded on this one before. You know, come here. Come here, doggy. Come here, little pooch. Come here. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> a reproof entereth more into a wise man than a hundred stripes into a fool. Go to Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs or Proverbs, Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 1. Verses 1 on to verse 23. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Where do you get wise counsels? Uh, to understand the proverb and the interpretation and the words of their wise and their dark sayings. They're dark because someone doesn't have light. And who is that light? Capital L, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. He is the light that lighteneth the world. Not Lucifer, like the Masons teach you. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. When, excuse me, we shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Sin can look very appealing, can it? Yeah, because Satan was, is a beautiful created cherubim, being. All the stones were his covering, his pipes. Yeah. Cast in thy lot among us, let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them, refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to evil, and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. And they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of every one that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief of plea of eh. She crieth in the chief place of concourse. In the openings of the gates, in the city, she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Dark sayings. Turn at her reproof, pour out her spirit unto you. What does it say there? 
I will pour out my spirit unto you. Excuse me. I will make known my words unto you. Wisdom is likened here unto a woman. Which is peaceable, pure, easy to be entreated, full of good fruits. What is that? The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is being compared unto the beauty of a woman. And also as to jewels and precious rubies. Better than apples, pitchers of gold and fine silver. How beautiful is the fear of the Lord? You get it? Proverbs chapter 27. One verse. Verse 22. A, a reproof entereth more into a wise man than an hundred stripes into a fool. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 22. Though thou shouldest bray a fool in a mortar among wheat with a pestle, yet will not his foolishness depart from him. Ah. Ah. Proverbs 26, verses 1 under verse 12. A reproof entereth more into a wise man than an hundred stripes into a fool. As snow in summer, <laughs> Midwest Illinois. <sighs> As snow in summer, I know it's not summer, but as snow in summer and as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemingly for a fool. What is a fool? As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. A whip for the horse a bridle for the ass, and a rod for the fool's back. A reproof entereth more into a wise man than an hundred stripes into a fool? Hmm. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Don't let these devils draw you into their arguments. They're nothing. They are of their father, the devil. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. See, when you go down to the level of these fools, these devils, and you fight their way, they win. In their perverted, warped little brains, they win. Ah, I made you be just like me, I won. It's kind of childish, isn't it? He that sendeth a message by the hand of a fool cutteth off the feet and drinketh damage. The legs of the lame are not equal. So is a parable in the mouth of fools. As he that bindeth a stone in a sling, so is he that giveth honor to a fool. As a thorn goeth up into the hand of a drunkard, <laughs> So is a parable in the mouth of fools. The great God that formed all things both rewardeth the fool and rewardeth the transgressors. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool 
than of him. A reproof entereth more into a wise man than an hundred stripes into a fool. Go back to Proverbs chapter 1. Verses 24 on to verse 33. See how he did that? Because I have called, and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. But ye have set it not on my counsel, and with none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. There you go. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me. But I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They were none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But... A reproof entereth, uh, Proverbs 17, verse 10, A reproof entereth more into a wise man than a hundred stripes into a fool. But, verse 33 in Proverbs chapter 1, But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. You know all my enemies out there and all the enemies of our Lord You look at that. I, 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 I seriously, I don't hate you. Y'all got, y'all got the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father to deal with. I don't like you, my enemies. Of course not, but hate you. Your enemies of the Lord, hardly my enemies. You who hate the Lord, I pity you. I really do. You look at that, what well, we just looked at. And here in Proverbs 17, a reproof entereth more into a wise man, one who fears the Lord, than an hundred stripes in a, into a fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Oh. Oh. Whereas verse 8, for our instruction in righteousness, could be likened unto speaking specifically unto those of the church of the living God, for our instruction in righteousness. Verse 11, an evil man seeketh only rebellion. Therefore, 
a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. An evil man seeketh only rebellion. First Samuel. First Samuel, chapter 15. Verses 22, I can't read my own handwriting. Verse 22 and verse 23. 1 Samuel chapter 15, 22 and 23. And Samuel said, speaking unto King Saul, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, Excuse me. To obey is better than sacrifice. And to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. And also within the New Testament, Paul likens covetousness as unto idolatry. I will be like the Most High. An evil man seeketh only rebellion. Continuing in verse 23, Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. You read in the book of Job, Leviathan, he is a king over all the children of pride. Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah chapter 66. Verses 3 and 4 in Isaiah chapter 66. An evil man seeketh only rebellion. Therefore, a cruel messenger shall be sent, sent against him. Isaiah chapter 66, verses 3 and 4. He that killeth an ox is as if he as, uh, excuse me, he that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea. Are you looking at that? Yea. They have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abominations. <laughs> I also will choose their delusions. I will bring their fears upon them because when I called <laughs> none did answer when I spake they did not hear but they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not An evil man seeketh only rebellion. 
Therefore a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7 on to verse 12. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Isn't it strange that Catholicism, uh, the mother of abominations, the whore, the harlot, Rome, and her church, Roman Catholicism, isn't it interesting that they spend all their time basically in these mysteries? Read uh, The Two Babylons sometimes. Alexander Hislop really gives a good, um, good thing on the mysteries. <clears throat> For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Until he be taken out of the way. It's not the Holy Ghost. It's not God the Father. It's not our Lord Jesus Christ. God is omnipresent. The he is his body. The church of the living God. The ground and pillar of truth. The redemption of the purchased possession. The catching away. Erroneously referred to as the rapture. Okay? And then, after the redemption of the purchased possession, and then shall that capital W wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Therefore, a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. Paul had a thorn in his flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet him, to keep him humble. Who is this cruel messenger, I wonder? The contrasts in these one, two, three, four, five verses are so astounding to me. How about you? The comparison, the contrast. Whereas verse 8, for our instruction in righteousness, which is what this is, likened unto those who are of the church of the living God. While as, verse 11, those whose father is the devil himself, who do the lust of their father. <laughs> but I'm lazy, right? <laughs> I, I, I love that man. He is my brother. Um, I don't really care if he even thinks of me at all. I could care less. 
you heard what he said. Do you understand what he said? Aha! That's the difference. <laughs> I just wanted to share this with you. Because, um, you know, today is the 17th. This, I shared this with a brother of mine. And um, it was just one of those like, wow, things. And um, I had purposely waited until today, the 17th, to do this. But um, just looking at it, uh, praise the Lord for his word. Also in this video, I'm going to put a link for a video of Let Us Reason together, you and I. Thank you so much for watching this, if you do. Um, we love you. Thank you to all of you. And thank you to all of you who, who did. And, um, you know, it, times that are right now, who can blame anyone? It is of the Lord's mercies, dear friend, Church of the Living God, brother and sister. It is of the Lord's mercy that you have today. Because you are not promised tomorrow. What are you going to do with this day? What are you going to do with this day? You know, any time spent in the authorized version of the scriptures, King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, is not time wasted. And if you were to dedicate your entire life unto the Lord Jesus Christ, learning of the Lord through the scriptures and humbling yourself and dedicating yourself to, to speak the scriptures, no matter what comes upon you, it will not be a wasted life. Thank you so much for watching if you do. We love you. Lord willing, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.